Okay, so take two recording this video. Uh, I forgot to turn on the microphone the last time. This is Edco A question 10. And the A part is a question about transformations. So what we'll do is we'll talk in particular initially about axial symmetry, which is what this question is about. But then we might have a look at some of the other transformations as well for revision. So when we talk about axial symmetry, we're talking about a mirror image of an object uh, through... Uh, the reflection in a line. So let's draw an X and a Y axis like this. And I'm just going to put in an object and I'm just going to have a simple letter for the purposes of this demonstration. And let's call this object uh, the letter L because that's what it is. And we're looking for the image of this object uh, through reflection in both the X and the Y axis. So first of all, let's write down S and then little subscript X like this. This means axial symmetry in the x-axis, in the x-axis. So we're looking for the image of the shape L through the line uh, x here, or the x-line, the x-axis. Now think of it in a couple of ways. One, that the x-line could be a mirror and we're looking for the reflection um, of the object through the mirror. Or another way to think of it is if we were to fold a piece of paper along the x-axis, uh, what would the image of L become on the other side of the line? So uh, we can see that if we were to fold over on the line X, or the X axis, we would have L down here in this quadrant here. Okay, so that's the image of, and we'll just write down that that's called the image. So this is the image through axial symmetry in the X axis. What would axial symmetry in the Y axis look like? Well, first of all, let's write down S, Y. So that's axial symmetry in the y-axis and uh, similar what we're going to imagine is that y is like a mirror and we're looking for the reflection of the letter L through that line y or we can think of folding a page along the line y and what would the reflection of L look like on the other side so it would be out here and it would look like a backwards L like this and so that's axial symmetry through the axis, so through the horizontal line X and the vertical line Y. But we can have axial symmetry through any line. And if we look at our sketch on the left here, where we're going to try and find um, the image of the object F through the line L, what we're imagining here is that L is like the mirror, and we're looking for the reflection of F on the other side. Or again, folding along this line L, what would it look like um, F would become, or what would the image of F be on the other side? And we can think of this as if we were to paint this object F, so to put paint on it um, on a page and then fold over on the line L, where would the paint transfer over on the other side? So how are we going to actually do this? We're obviously not going to slap paint onto the letter F. So our method is going to be that we're going to draw a number of perpendicular lines to L that go from the points on the letter F. So we're gonna find the image of the points on F through the line L. The way we do this is we draw loads of perpendicular lines. Everywhere there is a point on F, we're gonna draw a perpendicular dotted line out the other side. And so we keep doing that and we're finding the image of all of the points of F uh, through the line L. Now the question then becomes, well, that's fine, I know that the image of the point will be on that line, but how far across the line will I have to go to mark off the image point? So let's go over to an animation to have a look at this. So here we have our object F, and what we're doing, as we mentioned, is we're going to mark off points on F, and we're going to draw perpendicular lines to L from those points out the other side of the line L. And we go and we do that, with each of the points that are on F. Now, to figure out how far the other side we have to mark off, for example, I could get a ruler and measure this distance here, and then get the ruler and measure the same distance out the other side, mark it off, and I know that that's the image of this point of F out the other side through an axial symmetry in L. But rather than doing that, let's get our compass, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh, point of the compass on the point here on F, and then the pencil on the line, or vice versa, and that will measure the distance for us from the point to the line. 
And then we pick up the compass and without moving the gap, we go and place the point on the line and we mark off with the pencil that same distance out the other side. And so this point here is the image of this point in F through the line L. And we want to do that same thing with each of the other points. So we get the compass, we mark off the measurement on the left hand side, we come over to the right hand side and we swing off the various distances that we need to measure and then we connect all of these points so that we can again form our letter F which now is the image on the other side. Okay so let's spin back and talk about some of the other types of transformations. So useful when you're doing the exam papers and you look at a particular topic as we have here which is transformations and we've looked at axial symmetry but other types of transformations just to discuss briefly are central symmetry which is where we would find the image of an object, not through a line, but through a particular point. So if I say that I want the image of our object L in the top left hand corner here through the point 0, 0 in an XY axis, well then the image of this object would be this shape here out the other side. So it's like we folded it in the Y axis and folded it again on the X axis. So that's called central symmetry. We could have what's called a translation. So Let's write that down, translation. And a translation is just where we move an object in a particular uh, direction and a particular distance. So if we take again the object here in the top left hand corner and if I was just to move it somewhere else, that's called a translation. And then finally we could have what are called rotations. And rotations are where we turn an object. So let's say again we have our object here L and then I rotate it 90 degrees um, like so and then this object when I've rotated it at 90 degrees has turned into this image here and we could rotate it again and we would have this shape and so that would be a rotation of 180 degrees and so on. So as mentioned we're looking at axial symmetry in this question but that's no reason not to take out a page and try and remember the other types of transformations that we've met as well. So moving on to the B part, this is a really nice problem solving question. We're given a map that shows the locations of two towns, A and B, so we can see A here and B here, that are in a region in central Australia. There's a retail company wants to build a warehouse to serve the two towns. The warehouse has to be less than 50 kilometers from A, so let's imagine that that line is 50 kilometers, so it has to be within 50 kilometers of A, but also it has to be less than 40 kilometers from B. And what we have to do is using a ruler and a compass, we have to draw and shade in a region on this map where we could build the warehouse. So really nice problem. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the scale at the bottom, which says that one centimeter represents 10 kilometers, one centimeter equals 10 kilometers. And we're gonna change our distances in kilometers. So the warehouse has to be 50 kilometers from A. We're gonna change that into centimeters by multiplying one centimeter by five, we get five centimeters. Okay, we're also gonna do the same for uh, the distance that the warehouse has to be within B. So it's 40 kilometers from B. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna change 40 kilometers into four centimeters. So we won't refer anymore in this question to 40 kilometers and 50 kilometers, we'll refer to four centimeters and five centimeters. So this question now becomes, we need to take our ruler and our compass and draw in a region so that the warehouse is within five centimeters of A and four centimeters of B. So we could do this through trial and error. We could draw a line that's five centimeters from A and we could then see, is that within four centimeters of B and it is and we could put a little tick there and we could say look that's a region that's okay and then we could go and we could make another one five centimeters and see if that's within four centimeters and put another tick and then you know true trial and error we could find loads of regions that are within five centimeters of A and also within four centimeters of B but that kind of trial and error approach wouldn't work well in a question like this where there's so many possibilities so let's jump over to um, an interactive where we can actually see this demonstrated a little better on where we can put this shaded region. So we can see our map here again and what we're going to do this time is we're going to get the compass 
and we're going to measure from the point of the compass to the part where the pencil is, we're going to measure five centimeters. Why five centimeters? Remember, 50 kilometers is represented on this map by five centimeters. That's the scale that we're using. And so the radius here of a circle that I'm about to draw is five centimeters. And when I draw that circle, I know that everywhere within this green circle is five centimeters from A, which means that it's 50 kilometers in real life from the town A. So how do you think we're going to now incorporate um, the warehouse being 40 kilometers or four centimeters from B? Well, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get the compass again, but this time we're gonna measure four centimeters on the compass, four centimeters on the map, um, or on our compass represents 40 kilometers in real life. So I'm gonna put the point of the compass on B, and then uh, I know that this is four centimeters, the radius of the circle I'm about to draw. And so everywhere within this yellow circle is four centimeters or 40 kilometers in real life from the town B. And so the question then becomes, what is the region on our graph that's within 50 kilometers of A and within 40 kilometers of B? Well, it's gonna be the region where the two circles overlap. Everywhere within this red region here is within 40 kilometers or four centimeters of B and 50 kilometers or five centimeters of A. And so that's the region where we could build the warehouse. So did we have to actually draw the two full circles? Well, no, not necessarily. I could have measured five centimeters on the compass and then swung an arc that went around in this direction here. And I could have gone to B and with a radius of four centimeters, drawn an arc that went around the other side. And then I could have shaded in the overlapping parts of those two arcs. And the warehouse then can go anywhere in this shaded region.